Always remove a cleanser immediately with lukewarm water and a facial sponge or cloth. Handle the skin gently and with care. Don't push or shove. Overcleansing will strip the skin of natural oils, causing it to shrivel and age. If your skin is afflicted with blackheads, whiteheads and acne, it needs to be stimulated with a scrub cream, which contains pliable granules in a creamy base. It can be applied without pulling or cutting and ensures that fresh, healthy blood will activate and energize the surface skin cells whilst removing the layer of unsightly dead cells. The skin is left soft, smooth and meticulously clean. But, like a dying plant without water, aging skin requires something that will make it grow, that will revive it, rejuvenate it and bring it back to life. A rejuvenating cream penetrates right down to the basal layer of the skin, promoting new cell growth, stimulating the production of natural collagen and elastin, restoring the skin's ability to retain moisture, repairing scar tissue and, most importantly, retarding the aging process. If you're under 25 years of age, apply a rejuvenating cream three times a week. The 25 to 35 age bracket should get into a once-a-day habit. If you're over 35, twice a day is recommended. A rejuvenating cream makes the skin come alive, ready to utilize nourishment and moisture. Dry and dehydrated skins require a moisturizing mask. To do this, Apply a thick layer of moisturizing mask over the skin and leave it on for as long as you wish. The mask acts as a reservoir from which the skin can replenish its moisture requirements. Night falls, people retire, the body rests, except the skin that is. It's during sleep that cell division accelerates creating millions of new cells, all in need of nourishment and moisture. And so a good night cream rich in minerals and vitamins is indispensable, nourishing the hard-working cells, maintaining the skin's luster and fullness. Now for the more specialist applications. As a unique individual, you'll have specific requirements, like vitamin E, which can penetrate directly into cell walls, supplementing the natural vitamin E which diminishes with age and climate. Ever noticed how your skin struggles to adjust to gradual changes in the seasons? Or perhaps you have one of those in-between skins, neither oily dry nor oily normal? Then you probably need a non-greasy herbal moisturizer. Have you found that your skin reacts badly to traditional skincare products? Then look for a cream without problem ingredients, usually odorless and colorless. Another popular preparation is a skin freshener, which restores the skin's pH balance after cleansing. It's so fresh. Now how about your eyes? Squinting, smiling and concentrating are frequent activities which pull the delicate skin around the eyes in all directions. An eye texture cream will ensure that the skin remains supple and resilient, able to withstand the exigencies of modern day living. And you can smile without fear of developing creases around the eyes. What about other parts of the body? Remember, if you neglect the skin around your neck, it will be the first area to start aging. A cream specifically formulated for the neck area is a good idea. Women of all ages should use it and prevent premature aging, rejuvenating and keeping the neck soft, smooth and elastic. Now don't forget about your hands. They're always on the receiving end of life's little knocks. Frequent application of a hand cream will ensure that they continue to look good no matter how old you are. Your body also ages as time goes on and it is seldom moisturized or nourished to the same extent as the face. Apply a body lotion after your bath for best results and preserve that silky, smooth softness whilst preventing flaky and bitchy skin. Regular and thorough beauty care is a discipline. It's also a practice. A practice that makes perfect skin. Whatever your age, you're never too young 
too old or too late to take care of your most valuable beauty asset. No matter what type of skin you have, there will always be some skincare preparation which conforms to your unique requirements. And always choose reputable and quality products and triumph over time naturally. the Sun has always been an object of mystery and fascination. The planetary mentor, the life-giving powerhouse and emperor of the skies. With an inexplicable lure for humankind, like a cosmic Pied Piper, summonsing millions of people throughout the world to follow its seasonal shifts and prostrate themselves beneath its heated rays in search of a golden tan. The image of leisure, the symbol of bonhomie, and the trademark of the international jet set. But with all its mystical suggestions of privilege and athletic health, the terrifying dangers of sun damage are often forgotten, manifesting only when it's too late. Premature aging. Skin that appears to sag and droop, and that is leathery and wrinkly. But this does not have to be. There are certain precautions we can take and rules that have to be followed, especially living in a climate where our skins are bombarded on a daily basis by the sun's rays. Some of these rays are ultraviolet rays, which perform vital functions such as converting cholesterol and egosterol in the skin to vitamin D. But they also damage the skin cells and alter their structure. UV radiation penetrates the skin right down to the papillary layer, causing irreparable damage to the young developing cells. In fact, the damage is so great that the DNA structure of the cell is irreversibly altered, and because DNA stores the genetic information, succeeding generations of cells will be damaged and deformed. The net result of this is the formation of scar tissue in the skin surface. Sometimes skin blemishes appear on the skin. Wrinkles, grooves and dehydrated lines start to show. The connective tissue lose their elasticity and in some cases, eczema and allergies break out. 
continued exposure of vulnerable and damaged skin to these harmful UV rays will have drastic consequences for the skin and the body in general. As mutated cells are produced and themselves mutate again and reproduce, the resulting cells are different from the rest of the cells so that the body perceives them as foreign objects and declares war on them, attacking and devouring them. This process of rejection by the body of its own cells is known as skin cancer, a disease caused by the sun. So, how do we protect ourselves from the sun? Your skin has a pigment called melanin which determines skin color. The more melanin, the darker the skin will be. In the case of blondes, redheads and light-eyed people, there's less melanin and consequently lighter complexions. The dark melanin pigment is one of the major protectors against sunburn. A property which fairer skins lack. This necessitates the use of an externally applied screen to filter out the sun, a so-called chemical defense. Whenever your skin is exposed to the sun, use a sunscreen with a sun filter. But remember, clothes don't block out all the UV rays, so make sure your entire body is protected. In fact, it should be applied at least five days before the skin is directly exposed to the sun, so as to build up the natural protection level of the skin. You don't even have to be on a beach for the sun to wreak its damage. An office environment or even whilst travelling in a car can mean exposure to harmful radiation. In South Africa it's vital that a sunscreen is applied every day as an essential part of our daily skincare routines. This will allow for gradual and gentle tanning without peeling or any damage to the skin. A good sunscreen is always labelled with a sun protection factor. This is a number which indicates the level of protection available. The lower the number, the less protection. For example, if you're able to be exposed to the sun for, say, 10 minutes without burning, then applying a sunscreen with a protection factor 7 will allow you to extend your exposure by up to 7 times 10 minutes, that's 70 minutes. Now, at the end of your extended period of exposure, reapplying the sunscreen restores the original count. In other words, you can now continue for a further 70 minutes. But please note that repeated application does not enhance the degree of protection, but merely resets the clock, so to speak. After a day in the sun, the sunscreen should be applied as an after-sun care soother, offering protection and moisture to the skin. But for those who wish to be prudent and filter out all the ultraviolet rays, in addition to achieving complete protection against the damaging effects of wind, cold and air conditioning, use a sunblock every day. Such disciplined use has been proved to prevent the occurrence of darker sunspots and it's been known to lighten existing blemishes as well as benefiting acne-afflicted skins. Our bodies also have sun-sensitive areas which require extra special attention. These are the hair, scalp, eyes and lips, nose and ears and swimming costume lines. Take care continually to moisturize and condition these areas. Another way to render the sun's ultraviolet rays impotent is by supplementing the skin with the necessary vitamins which are destroyed when the skin is exposed to the sun. Vitamin A is recommended as it improves the skin's ability to protect itself from within. Medical journals eulogize about the remarkable effects of vitamin E. This has the ability to retard cell damage and should be applied directly to the surface of the skin. Gelatine capsules should be taken every day to maintain the network of tissue which binds the whole skin structure together. Always bear in mind that sunburn is skin damage and it is damage that is self-inflicted. You only have yourself to blame. But after all this, if you still have an overwhelming compulsion to go for that golden tan, then stick to these five golden rules. Number one, Always apply a generous coating of lotion at least one hour before exposure to the sun and repeat this procedure as often as is necessary depending on the sun protection factor of the sunscreen. And as Noel Coward said, only mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. Hence rule number two. Remember to register the intensity of the sun. The damaging type of UV rays are most intense between the hours of 10 o'clock in the morning and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Beware, overcast days can be deceptive. 
UV rays easily penetrate clouds, causing serious damage to unprotected skin. In addition, water surfaces, glass windows and sand all reflect light and heat which can harm the skin. Use a sunscreen at all times, even if you are in the shade. 3. Before going into the sun, do not take any drugs or medication such as tetracycline, antidepressants, painkillers or the contraceptive pill. Cosmetics and perfumes should also be avoided. These could all cause what is known as a phototoxic reaction, which manifests as allergic rashes or painful and red swellings. Rule number four, it's unadvisable to quench your thirst with a carbonated drink as this just aggravates the dehydration caused by the sun. Five, in the case of uncomfortable sunburn and sun damage, use a sunblock lotion to anesthetize the pain and prevent peeling. And at the end of the day's exposure, a moisturizer and body lotion should be applied to the skin. 700 years ago, the sun worshippers used to indulge in human sacrifice. Our latter-day variety are no different. Only this time, they are sacrificing themselves. Don't you be one of them.